is able to maximize on his physical performance. By not allowing those people some flexibility, they're not going to be able to maximize on their physical intelligence. The spirit, the leader knows best and all, makes all the important decisions. You're killing the spirit of the individual, then you're killing the psyche of the whole organization. This is the whole person paradigm. And the idea is to use a person in a creative way, treat them kindly, pay them fair, and help them serve human needs in principal ways. In every organization, <coughs> the more people you have and apply this to them, the most likely you'll have a good number who feel that they can learn, live, love, and they feel that they could leave their legacy in life through working in this organization. Once a person reaches that point, he or she it will unleash a phenomenal potential. We believe the increased productivity is much higher than 50 times, probably 100, 200 times. And those are the ones who help organizations excel and become great. From day number one, we started. We start with this vision. That vision is to pioneer a unique approach <coughs> of healing the mind, body, and soul by applying the best global healthcare standards and pursuing divine ethics. رسالتنا هي صناعة نموذج الفريد برعاية صحية ذات نظرة شمولية لشفاء الإنسان جسدا وعقلا وروحا باتباع أفضل المعايير الطبية العالمية للعلاج واقتفاء المعايير الربانية في المعاملة خمسة أهلة تجتمع بكوكب ما يسمى الشجرة Five Crescents They join together to form a tree We call that tree a blessed tree We call ourselves farmers Nobody here work for anybody We all work for that tree Now, this is very important when you form an institution based on this concept that nobody works for anybody. By the way, this is the only private hospital in Saudi Arabia which is not a family business or one man show. It's an institution. What's the idea? If everybody feels that nobody works for anybody, we all work for the tree. And the value of each individual depends on how much they give to that tree. It's a different story. In the holy book, it talks about Sayyidina Sulaiman By the way, we studied uh, uh, Prophet Sulaiman, and we got more than 90 characteristics of the leadership of Prophet Sulaiman There was the story of the hoodhood, and he looked at Sayyidina Sulaiman, there is no leader on earth had the power as much as Sayyidina Sulaiman. So he had the, the uh, ins or jinn, powerful. So he stands there and he finds a small hole of his army and says, where is the bird? Okay, and he has this way, which is a system where he can know the absence without punch cards. Because they're so organized, if it opens a slit, he knows there's something missing there. Okay, so he found that the bird was missing. So he said, just imagine this, so the man who owns, owns all earth, jinn will ends, he starts, what, threatening. Where is the bird? If he does not give me, come immediately, I will, that bahanna, I will slaughter him. I will, uh, the bird, torture him, okay? Now, the bird comes. Now, did the Quran see the bird came shivering? Now, just imagine one of our kings or our rulers, and he threatened a person, how do you think the person would come to that? Uh, shaking. Shaking. But the Quran says what? فَلَبِثَ غَيْرَ بَعِيدٍ The bird came, then the was sitting, and he was sitting in front of him, not too far from him. What did he say to him? I do apologize, but no. قَالَ أَحَطُّ بِمَا لَمْ تُحِدْ بِهِ وَجِئْتُكَ مِنْ سَبَئٍ بِلَبَئٍ عَظِيمٍ Look at the power of him. Why is he so powerful? He is 100% confident Suleiman cannot touch him. Why? Because he does not work for Suleiman. 
He works with a mission that Suleiman works for. So he knows the mission, vision is clear. So he came with confidence. He knows Suleiman will not touch him. Because Suleiman can just do like this, he's gone. He can touch him. this point like this, he's gone. Right? And he's confident of his justice. But he knows that he does not work for Suleiman. He works for the mission and vision. And he says, Today, I know more than you, Suleiman. So basically, today, I'm in sight of God who evaluates both of us. Okay? I have brought something you don't know. Basically, the one who's inviting you and me today looks at me. I am today, at this moment, serving the mission and vision more than you. How could you touch me? That's the difference between working for somebody and working for the mission. And that's what we're trying to establish in any organization. If you establish this, then you attract very many talented people. They're not coming for salary. They're coming because they want to be a part of a mission, something greater than themselves. And they feel that when they give that place, they're giving that tree, they're not working for a family or for individual, they're working for a mission of life. So back, back to basics. Abyssinia wrote about holistic approach, mind, body, heart, and spirit. Abyssinia wrote this book called The Law of Medicine when he was 16 years old. And that book of medicine remained as a major text of medicine in Europe for how many years? By the way, today if you have somebody who published a book in medicine and stays for one decade, that would be considered quite an accomplishment. One, two, three decades, great. How many years do you think this book remained as text number one in Europe? 500. 500 years, absolutely. Another 200 years as one of the top three. So total 700 years. Thank you. And you must have studied Abyssinia. Because you're the first one in the last five years who answered it. <laughs> and this is no longer, it's not something old or new. It's a universal order. It's the right thing to do. And you see the eighth habit. How many of you have read this book, Eighth Habit? We have, about, we have a full day about it. Oh, good. And seven habits of highly effective people? Good. The eighth habit of mind, body, heart, and spirit. And it's amazing. We have done our mission, vision, and values, everything before that book was published. When it came out, they said, SubhanAllah, it's a universal order, it's wisdom. So it talks about mind, body, heart, and spirit. And this is, the problem is leadership. Is a leadership practice today the prevailing thing? Is it a choice or is it a position? Unfortunately, it's a position. And that's a problem. We have to redefine leadership. Otherwise, in our organizations, we're going to not develop the right leaders and we're going to miss those leaders. You know? And I believe there's only one kind of a leader, serving leader. And we have many examples of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and their companions, but this is the leadership. And that leader has to be 360 degree leader. Whenever I go to an organization or a company, I like to ask a question to the T-boy. I'm trying to find another name for T-boy. Hospitality manager. We're working on it. We're going to change the name. And I try to ask him, I say, how does he treat you, the CEO? You always say, yeah, good, good. I say, if he treats the board members here, what does he treat you? Now, then they don't have, I need to do that. I, two, three times he says, and then he moves on. <laughs> now you know this leader is a fake. Because you are either genuinely kind, good person, or not. You can't have two faces. You can't have a situation based on you, whether you become a minister, you become something, and then when you lose, you become somebody else. So this is, you have the 360 degree, when you evaluate this leader, Consistency tells you whether this leader is genuine or not. Let's say uh, Sayyid al Qawm Khadim. When I started, I used to talk about this love leadership. Initially, before we get the money and reach the cash break, even, some people used to smile and say, My God, this guy is really out of it. He's a dreamer. Wait until he gets to the real world. Wait until he crashes financially. But I believe this is the right leadership. This is the new way to lead in a fear-based world. This is the leadership. Because there's no other way to lead. You don't lead people by force. You might lead them, you might force them to follow you temporarily. But unless they see what you're doing, you can't. So the idea to create that love 
among your organization, people love each other, they start loving the mission and vision and love the leader. And there is no other choice. Today, I speak with confidence because anybody who believes only in numbers, I show them the numbers. And there is no contradiction. It's a complimentary. You do everything that everybody does. Policy, procedures, everything. Best standard of care. Follow the best guidelines for financial utilization. But at the same time, you build a culture of love. People sometimes in their mission have this perception that these don't fit. Who said so? Same thing in medicine. We learn the wrong way. To be a real good physician, you have to be professional. Professional means you have to be detached. You don't talk about the mind, body, and soul. When I studied medicine in George Washington in 1987, it was a taboo to talk to a patient about anything but his or her physical illness. If I talk about mind, heart, and body, and mind, heart, or spirituality, I could be kicked out of medical school. By the late 90s, I did a study, uh, some studies with a man called Vincent, Jewish, and he talks about how we can help patients heal from within. In his lecture, he talks about how, what are the effects of tasbih in the Muslims on the relaxation response, heart rate and blood pressure, and the, uh, the EEG or the uh, brain waves. Okay. So, this is the right way, no other way. Anybody tells you that you could lead people, but other than that, that person doesn't understand anything about human nature. So, we start here with the five crescents. We chose the crescent because crescent has a very nice indication. It has nice symbolic meaning in Islam. So those five, mind, body, heart, and spirit, we put the mind on the top. So even asking why the mind should be the spirit top? What do you think? Should be mind or spirit? I have no yeah, any doubt. It's the mind. Why is that? Yeah, but we put the whole kitab and one group them the What's our We are put on earth and there is a catalog for us. Where's our catalog? Quran. Quran. Sorry, I apologize. <coughs> catalog, but trying to get an edge, at least simplify it. Now, usually, when you open the catalog, the first chapter, the first words, the things with, of importance. What are the five, 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 first five verses of the Holy Book? It talks about what? <laughs> اقرأ بسم ربك الذي خلق. Read. اقرأ بسم ربك. خلق الإنسان من علق. علق عجاز علمي. اقرأ. ربك الأكبر الذي علم خلق. علم الإنسان من علق. Seven words has to do with the reading, with the pen, with knowledge. Not a single word has to do with anything has to do with spirit. لا belief ولا spirituality ولا ولا إيمان nothing. What does it tell you? It tells you which one falls the top. The mind. And there are throughout history you've seen that many people, when they have a very good heart, but they have the wrong understanding of things, that led them to a wrong path. And in the name of that love, they committed the worst crimes in humanity. We've seen, we have so many examples. Anyway, so mind. What does this have to do with anything? We do everything. Now, please, whatever your industry is, you can take this one and extrapolate it to your industry. This is universal wisdom. Mind. How do we respect the intellect of our patients? How do we make patients part of the treatment? How do we respect the intellect of our colleagues? How do we teach with kindness? How do we create a culture in which the voice is heard and the mind is respected? A whole concept based on respecting the mind. I'll just give you an example of our implementation. Now, each one of those, we can talk for hours. And inshallah, we're going to write our book in the next two years. We have the Yuta way, inshallah, you have the IMC way, inshallah. And that book will be written by people who have built this place with us. Each one will take a chapter. And already have people working on stories, reason to believe that this is right. Now, principle-centered leadership. 